Oh, and welcome to another lesson on solutions in chemistry one. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about calculations involving concentrations of solutions and discuss how to make up solutions <clears throat> of a given concentration as we lead into the lab for this week in which we're going to be looking at molarity, which is a concentration unit, and how different solutions can absorb light at different amounts depending on their concentrations. In the next lesson, you'll get a, a video um, to lead us into the lab on the relationship between concentration and absorbance of light. But for now, let's talk about what concentration is. So concentration is the measurement of the amount of the solute in a given amount of solution. So we're not talking about, um, about a volume of a of water that's going into the solution, for instance, what we're gonna be talking about is when you're done with a solution, how much solute is actually in a given volume. A concentrated solution is one that has a relatively high concentration. So a lot of solute and a low concentration has um, a low amount, lower amount of solute. And the way we're going to measure molarity is how it's called. Molarity is by taking the moles of solute and we're going to divide it by the liters of solution or molarity is equal to moles over volume, M over V. And we're going to come back to this equation too in a few minutes uh, when we start doing, uh, doing work with it. Just be, be, make sure you understand that for these calculations, volume must be in liters. And if you're given mass, you must convert the mass to moles. Uh, on the other hand, there might be some problems where you're going to be asked to give mass. And in that case, you're going to have to calculate the moles first and then use the molar mass to convert to moles. So in the first problem, let's make it real nice and easy for you. I want to know what is the concentration, the molarity. Whenever I say concentration now, I'm going to be talking about molarity of 0.25 moles of a sodium chloride of sodium chloride in a 0.5 liter solution. So this solution has 0 0.25 moles of the sodium chloride in it. And we have 0.5 liters of total solution. And what that's going to give us is 0.25 divided by 0.5 is 0 0.50. And uh, there's a zero there. Yeah, there's a zero after the five. 0 0.50 molar. So we do pronounce this molar like the tooth. 0 0.25 molar sodium chloride. Now, we don't have 0 0.50 molar sodium chloride, 0 0.50 moles, because we only have half a liter. This would be saying that if we had 1.00 liter solution, oops, solution, don't cross my L's, there would be 0 0.50 moles of sodium chloride. Okay, so we'll be using that concept as we move forward. Next, let's talk a little more uh, complex problem. We have 37.94 grams of potassium hydroxide in 500 milliliters of solution. So we've got two convert alerts here. The first convert alert, we have to take the grams and convert it into moles. And then the second convert alert, we have to take our milliliters and convert that into liters. All right, so I've said that here. Let's show those conversions before we put everything together. So to convert to moles, we're going back to chapter 11 here, 37.94 grams of KOH. Going to multiply by one mole of potassium hydroxide. I will spot you the molar mass for this, 56.11 grams of KOH. Let's cancel out the moles, uh, the, sorry, the grams of the KOH, leave us with moles of KOH, and we get 0 0.6762 to significant figures. We get four sig figs in both of our numbers, moles of KOH. Now the volume, we have milliliters 
So we want to convert milliliters to liters. Milliliters goes in the denominator, liters up on top. Remember, milli means 1,000. So we put 1 times 10 to the third. Oh, sorry, do I have this backwards? Um, 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Sorry, milli means 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 3 divided by 1. We could divide by 1,000 as well. If you remember that a milliliter is 1,000. A thousand milliliters is a liter. Cancel out the milliliters and we get 0 0.50000. Again, four significant figures, five zero zero, too many zeros. Liters of solution. And now we put it all together, 0 0.6762 moles of KOH divided by 0 0.5000 liters of solution. And you do that math, we get 1.352 molar KOH. You know what, let's box in our answers. Let's box in the answer up above as well. All right, hopefully not too difficult so far. Next, I want to know, if you want to make 750 milliliters of a 6.00 molar sodium hydroxide solution, how many moles do you need? So now I'm looking for the numerator here. Now we can split apart the molarity or we can use it as a conversion factor. For now, um, let's, let's look at it both ways, okay? Uh, or let's use it as a conversion factor. So that 6.00 moles means that we, molar means that we get 6.00 moles of sodium hydroxide in one liter of solution. Now you could plug this into the equation and you could say that 6.00 molar is equal to 6.00 moles. I'm sorry, is equal to, no, you don't know how many moles, is equal to, um, let's say question mark moles of sodium hydroxide divided by 0 0.7500 uh, liters. Okay, so I've done the conversion for you here. Um, make sure you show me that conversion, or at least make some reference to, okay, so that is 0 0.7500 liters. And we can rearrange this so that the moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to 6.00 molar times 0 0.7500 liters. So I gotta squeeze it in there. We have moles times volume. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Or we can use it as a conversion factor. So whichever way is easiest for you at this point, although I would practice this way because when we get to stoichiometry, we're going to need to do this. So we take the 7, 0.750 liters. Start with your single unit. And we're going to multiply by liters in the denominator and moles up on top. Well, there's a point at 6.00 moles in one liter. We're going to get the same answer either way. It's going to be 4.50 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, in the homework, I'm going to ask you further to convert that from moles into, into grams. So you'd multiply by the molar mass to get to grams. We're not going to do that here um, because I want to move ahead and show you how to prepare these precise solutions. Now, there's a video that went along with this, and the video was called Volumetric Flasks. You should go ahead and go watch that. Now, I can't show that during, during one of these videos, but go ahead and watch that Volumetric Flasks because it's going to explain a little bit about what's going on here. So the Volumetric Flask is a is a piece of glassware or plastic tube that contains a precise volume when filled to a calibration line. And when I say precise, it's to within plus or minus so 0.1% or better. So these are very well calibrated. And you see an example of a, of a volumetric flask down below. So in this example, what we're gonna do is show you uh, how to measure out a particular amount of cobalt two chloride. And we can move ahead and think about this as we're moving forward as well. So the first thing you're gonna do is measure out the amount of solute that's, that, uh, that you need. So the amount of solute, you're gonna know the number of moles, 
just like we did up above for the sodium hydroxide, the number of moles, and then we're going to have to convert that to grams because I still don't have any balances that can measure out in moles. Then you're going to put that into the volumetric flask and a portion of the solvent is put in. I usually say you want to put about three quarters full. By three quarters full, I usually mean up to the mark, about where that 500 milliliters is, three quarters um, of the way up to the neck. This part here is called the neck. It looks like a neck, right? Or actually that's the shoulder. And this part up here is the neck. And that neck is where we see the calibration line that we're aiming for. You're gonna put it into the flask and then you're going to, it doesn't show it here, but you have to put a stopper on. And then you swirl and shake the mixture until all of the solute is dissolved. You've got to get all that solute dissolved first. And then the very end, you add additional solvent up to that mark. So we're coming up to that mark. We're going to use the meniscus. So as we've done before, the bottom of the meniscus, use that meniscus. And you might want to use a dropper at the end to be precise. Make sure you get exactly how much solute you, you need in there. Uh, add it up to mark, a volumetric flask. Once you do that, stopper and shake again, and you will have the solution that you're looking for. So I've outlined those steps down here. I know, um, well, you should have it next page unless you print it double-sided. So step one, measure the solute. Uh, that assumes you've calculated the needed mass, put it into the flask, fill up to about three quarters full with solvent. It doesn't have to be exact. Stop or shake until dissolved, fill it up to the calibration line, use a dropper or pipette, and then you mix it well. And then you have the solution that you need. So that's how you're going to think about making a solution. And that'll be covered in the, uh, in the lab as well if you're starting with a solid solute. Now you don't always have a solid solute. Sometimes we have a stock solution. A stock solution is a stronger, more concentrated solution that you can then make a weaker solution from. So we're diluting. Diluting means to make a weaker solution from a more concentrated one. Now here's the key. The amount of solute does not change you're only going to add more solvent. So in the step one, you're going to, and we'll get to the calculations in a few moments, you're going to figure out a volume of a concentrated solution that you need, the stock solution. So that's going to be the calculation down below. In step two, and that's, that's shown here, they're using what's called a volumetric pipette. In a volumetric pipette, we have a mark just like we have on a volumetric flask this is if you need an exact amount like 10 milliliters or 25 milliliters otherwise as you're going to see in the video for the for the um, lab in the next last uh, in the subsequent in the subsequent day i think it's going to be on wednesday uh, you can use a a graduated pipette and a graduated pipette measures off in milliliters and so you can put in pretty much any any volume that you need and then you're going to put that into the second flask now the second flask is going could be a different volume it's going to want a different concentration so put that measured volume transferred into the second flask now when it's here when you have it in here it's not dilute yet just transferring it into the flask isn't enough you then have to dilute it with a solvent all the way up to the mark and they've got a little equation here, VSMS equals VDMD, V of the um, stock solution, so this is our stock solution, and uh, times its molarity is equal to the volume of the diluted solution times its molarity. And the reason this works is because M times V, as we saw above, those both equal the moles of solute. And as we said above, the moles of the solute hasn't changed. So um, since 
we have two different solutions, two different concentrations, two different volumes. The moles of solute is staying the same. Now notice too what's happened here. When we wanted to dilute the solution, the molarity is going down. So that means because this is an inverse relationship, and it looks an awful lot like P1V1 equals P2V2, doesn't it? This inverse relationship, to get the molarity to go down, the volume has to go up. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you call solution one and solution two, just as long as you are consistent. And I'll mark out which ones I'm calling solution one and solution two down below. So we want to get this in this first problem, this, the concentration of a solution. We want, this is our stock solution. And so we're going to dilute, I'm sorry, no, this is dilute. We want to know what the second molarity, this is a dilute solution. So let's call this, oh, it is M2, to dilute 50 milliliters to, uh, of 4.74 molar hydrochloric acid. So 50 milliliters is our M1, 4.74 mol, um, sorry, got it backwards, that's our V1, and this is our M1. And we know those two go together because the of between them. That of can be thought of as a multiplication. So volume and molarity. Two, that tells you that this is the um, end result. And so this is our V2. So let's get our molarity, our, our dilution equation. By the way, th these equations are all on your reference chart. So M1, V1 is equal to M2, V2. We're trying to solve for M2, so let's rearrange, and we get that M, uh, that M2, uh, let me try that again. M2 is equal to M1 times V1 over V2. Now notice in this equation what happens. If volume two is going up, Let's use a different color so we don't confuse people. So volume two, let's use purple. If volume two is going up, that means this whole term is going down. And so the molarity should go down. And that's good because it's going to be a dilute solution. Let's plug in our numbers. M1 was 4.74 molar. Oh, you wait a minute. You say, don't we need to convert milliliters? Ah, uh, don't convert milliliters. Here's why. We're going to put a V1 was 50.00 milliliters in the numerator. We're going to divide that by 250.0 milliliters. Look what happens. The milliliters cancel out. And we're left with molar, which is the unit we're looking for. And the answer is 0 0.948 molar. And notice, check the molarity. Molarity 2 went down. Uh, another kind of question we could ask is, what volume do we need if we're going to dilute? So diluting is the action that's being taken on this solution. There's that of. So this is our... M1, oops, I got it backwards again, V1 and M1. And we want to obtain, so there's our solution two. There's our M2. And so we're looking for to what volume we're looking for our V2. So somehow, maybe you should highlight what the, what the numbers are you're looking for or what the numbers are you have and plug it in. Also notice that I have the volume in liters, don't feel like you need to convert. If I don't ask for milliliters, you don't have to give me milliliters. So let's keep it in liters. And that's what's going to come out in the end. So again, M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. Now we're looking for V2. So V2 is going to equal M1 times V1 divided by M2. Again, if we look at the, the form, so we're going to go from 12 molar to 1.8 molar. So 
the molarity is going to go down. If the molarity goes down, that means the volume has to go up. And again, that's what a dilution is going to be. So plug in our numbers. M1 was 12.0 molar. V1 was 0 0.250 liters. We're going to divide that by M2, which was 1.80 liters. And let's see what cancels out is the, the liters. Um, no, not liters. I'm sorry. Let's try that again because this should be 1.80. Oh, why did it go all the way back there? Sorry about that. Because this, somebody should have caught me on that. Maybe you did. Um, why is that not erasing? Let's try that again. There we go. That should be molar there, not liters. And so the molarity, the molars cancel out. And that leaves us with liters as our answer, as our unit. And we get 1.67 liters that we need to dilute that to. Did the molarity, I said, did the volume go up? Yes, volume two went up just as we expect. All right, so we have some practice for you on the worksheet. This is not going to be due until our next, until a half an hour before our next class. So, um, don't wait but and get it done as soon as you can, but um, it's not going to be due immediately. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time in class.